Everybody, welcome to What Culture Gaming. I'm Scott, joined by Josh. Hello. Seismic news is a drop in, hence why we're doing two newses within 24 hours or whatever. And time we just it is. totally missed it. <laughs> I know. Well, it turns out the Death Stranding, although we kind of think of it as a you know bona fide PS4 uh, exclusive, might not be that thing at all. Shocking. We've uh, had like ridiculous discussions over <laughs> Slack about this because we kind of fall on different sides of the fence. Is does this mean it's going to be a PC release? Does it mean it's going to come to Xbox? I think no on that front. No, I don't think so, although we can start passing this out. So uh, basically someone over on, on uh, Reset Era called Vestan realized that if they looked at the official Sony PlayStation websites for, it was uh, the UK, Portugal, France, and Germany, um, and Australia. Australia was the first one that they found it on. Death Stranding is no longer listed as a bona fide exclusive like the likes of Days Gone or Horizon Zero Dawn. Um, now they then used the uh, Wayback Machine, the website that lets you go back in time to see when this change occurred, and they found that it was actually back in May, the, uh, May 26th. None of us seem to have realized though. Um, so basically, it just kind of has the conversation around whether Death Stranding is like what kind of exclusive it's going to be because the likes of Nier and Street Fighter V were exclusives, but then they came yes. onto the PC. Well, that's it. Obviously, I think it's going to be a PC release because mm -hmm. Kojima Productions um, is only a second party studio when mm -hmm. it comes to um, Sony's relationship with them. Sony mm -hmm. doesn't own them like they do kind of Sucker Punch or Naughty Dog. And like you said, a lot of those second party relationships have birthed PC releases in the past. So I think that makes a lot of sense. But the mm -hmm. question remains when will a PC release happen? Well, I'll pose you a different thing because Ooh. if you go back to, um, I think it was E3 2015, there's a whole quote about Hideo Kojima and this was confirmed by, uh, it was like PlayStation's um, EU community manager saying that the game will come to PC after a stint on PS4. So that thing's kind of been out there since 2015, although it did kind of go back and forward and fans have debated as to whether it's you know a true exclusive and etc. But if that was the case, if that was always at the outset back in 2015, why did any of the official PlayStation sites always list it as an exclusive? Yes. And that would mean if if you take the idea that it's coming to PC as a given, why would you list it as an exclusive and then delist it in May? That points to it not coming to PC or coming to PC as well as Xbox. This is the biggest it's question the because it's a strange thing to just announce so late. I mean, the game is out in October that yeah. it would be coming to another platform this late in the game. Well, like you said before we came in to start filming, mm. because pre-orders are already up, people are excited about it. Yeah. They've been boasting about how it's a PlayStation 4 exclusive. So mm -hmm. it's a kind of very, very strange way to go about it, especially on Sony's behalf. I will behalf. posit a potential um, in that. I mean, look at the budget for this thing. The amount of just ridiculously high-grade actors and talent that Kojima's got together. I know that he spent a whole bunch of time after he <laughs> escaped Konami um, and went into the loving bosom of Sony, just going up and down America. Don't, don't, that, that. That's definitely what he did. Everybody needs a bosom for a pillow. They do. Saying. That's him with Nicholas Winding Refn. That's him <laughs> just, just getting in. And uh, he went up and down the country deciding on which sort of talent he wanted to use, which sort of technologies he wanted to use, different types of motion capture and all these different things. And eventually, assumedly, someone was keeping track of that. And eventually he would have, have to go back to Sony and be like, this is my budget. Yeah. This is what I want to do. I'm going to call it Death Stranding. It's going to be, X, going to be about X, Y, Z. Um, and then, I mean, who knows as to how the uh, production cost went over time. It wouldn't be out of the realms of possibility to then do multi-platform for the sake of recouping such a gargantuan budget. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, even if it does come to PC, Sony still get to kind of claim it as an exclusive because mm. it's definitely a console exclusive and it's still very deeply tied to their brand. All of the marketing has been based mm -hmm. on them at their conferences, at their events, up until the release. So it's very entrenched in the Sony brand, even if it does go multi-platform. What and though? Oh, go, go on, on then. No, no, go on. Well, I was going to say, what do you do if it then pops up on Xbox? How much does that affect the sort of all the rollouts, all the marketing, all the different things that they've put in place and the way that we think of it? The sort of that assumption that it is going to be the next big PlayStation exclusive next to The Last of Us 2. Um, well, that's when it gets complicated, isn't hmm. it? Because I have no idea whether they would allow that to happen, even right. though, like, Metal Gear Solid 4 is quite a good example. Mm -hmm. The franchise before then had come to Xbox, but it was still kind of entrenched as a Sony exclusive. Mm -hmm. And Metal Gear Solid 4, to this day, has not gone to other platforms no. other than PlayStation 3. So Kojima and Sony do have this, well, obviously, this part of PlayStation 4. Mm -hmm. Kojima and Sony do have this working relationship, and mm -hmm. I think there would be a case there where Kojima would just kind of be open to being like, look, I want to bring it to as many people as possible. I just want to like, put layers to do in it, okay? Yeah, yeah let, me, let me, do. just give me the money, and if we need to put it in place, PC as well as PlayStation 4, I mean, you know, I'm Kojima, I can do what I want. I've got a vision, okay? I've got a man who lives in 28-minute cycles. Again, it is one of those cases where um, developers always say that although exclusives are good for funding titles and getting mm. original, you know, ideas off the ground, at the end of the day, they want as many people as possible to play their games, and exclusivity does hamper that in a major way, so. Yeah, it just it seems like such a strange thing considering that it was 
a massive get for on Sony's behalf. Like, I mean, I'd never, unless it was out there, I kind of missed the figure that they coughed up to acquire Kojima. Bet but I remember, it, I bet it was a lot. And I remember it being a massive deal. Obviously, it was a whole hoo-ha between Kojima and Konami and where's he going to go next and whatever. And he retained the name uh, Kojima Productions. Um, you know, obviously didn't keep the Metal Gear IP. But assumedly, they would want something like the next Metal Gear to be mm -hmm. a big deal, to be a big console exclusive. Um, and although I don't immediately see big franchise potential for Death Stranding, it feels like, you know, this big sort of artistic, like, it just feels like he's doing this one idea he's had for years because it has horror tendencies. It's something that he kind of did in PT, etc. But I think the amount of money that Sony coughed out for it, coughed up for it. Yes. It would be the weirdest thing ever if it then went to Xbox. Well, you have touched on something very interesting there, though. What if in the future? Because Kojima has been tied to Metal Gear for the bulk of his um, career like as a professional. Yeah, exactly. He's been tied to a franchise before. Mm. What I think, and this is totally speculation, is that going forward, he might not want to tie himself down to a franchise mm. in the same way. So from now on, he might create these individual original um, experiences like Death Stranding mm -hmm. and then move on to something else. I don't know if there's any harm and you might disagree, but making Death Stranding, having it tied to the PlayStation 4, and then in a year later releasing it for the Xbox, because there won't be a Death Stranding 2, and he'll move on to something else uh -huh. and repeat the cycle where his games are tied to Sony's platform yeah, yeah. and PC, but because they're not franchises, you don't really lose much by I tell you, um, into the next thing. Someone else that kind of fits this mold, um, which I didn't necessarily realize until after Sekiro came up, but From Software, um, like they yeah. sort of obviously had their own franchises. They did uh, Demon Souls and Dark Souls, and then signed on with Sony to do Bloodborne, then signed on with Activision to do Sekiro. Um, and it's sort of they maintain their own like you know trajectory, and they seem to have their own artistic goals and everything. But they seem to they wrote, they bring in different publishers, and it allows them to sort of have enough control over their own um, company. But yeah, they get the budgets from elsewhere. Yeah. So maybe Sony's helping get this thing out the door but I don't know like Kojima as himself is then going to start going whoring himself out I have, I have two points yes. one is that that wouldn't be unprecedented because second party studios who have worked with Sony in the past the biggest being Insomniac mm. have done that before where they've created they've had a great working relationship with Sony they made sort of Ratchet and Clank they made Spider-Man but they've done mm. things in between them like Sunset Overdrive which was an Xbox exclusive and Fuse and Fuse bit which, fuse. <laughs> which um, you know Kojima could opt to go down a similar path. Mm -hmm. And another point that I have totally forgotten at this <laughs> point, so let's run with this. I'm going to assume that it was something to do it was something interesting, with probably. second party studios still having some sort of autonomy, which I think is kind of essential for someone as creatively minded this as This was Kojima. it. I finally remembered it. It was the fact that Sony, as far as I'm aware, when it comes to second party games, they actually own the IP. So right, right. it could be a case here if it's like their other deals. And as we know, Kojima will have had alterations to the contract, mm -hmm. so he might have weaseled out of this. But usually, Sony owns the IP of mm -hmm. what these second party studios make. So the fact that that would put a hamper on it coming to Xbox. I think especially. it's worth having a wider conversation about the role of auteurs in gaming too. I mean, like the likes of Ken Levine or um, people like Cliffy B or like someone like Kojima. These were names that were sort of known a hell of a lot more in the last generation mm -hmm. um, as to are looking forward to the next Ken Levine game, the next Kojima game. Kojima is one of the last people like that. Like I think someone like Corey Barlog sort of came up because of God of War, but I don't see him being, you know, a Corey Barlog game yes. in the way that Bioshock kind of is and obviously the way that Hideo Kojima's Metal Gear is. Um, but this, like I would like this to be the way that we go forward where, you know, you prioritize the auteur, you prioritize the creativity, and they get to just, you know, get a, get the checks from the publishers, and you prioritize individual games as opposed to being locked to franchises. And I think Sony does like doing that as well. Yeah. Like you said, they're, they, well, they haven't really had a hand in it, but Cory Barlog in particular has been mm. built up now as this auteur when I didn't even know who he was, and that's not a, <laughs> that's not kind of like a, a slight on him. God of War 2? I, I did It's metal. just the fact that before then, Don't Sony sort of likes to cultivate like these personalities. We've got Cory Barlog, we've got Neil Druckmann, we've got yes. now Hideo Kojima, and we know more about the singular creatives in Sony stable mm. than we do, than I do at least in publishers like EA or mm -hmm. Activision. Like I'm sure there are there are obviously people in there that you know get talked about a lot, but they don't sort of have the same auteur status mm -hmm. as the people in Sony stable. Which is kind of stable. cyclical. Like if you go back in gaming history and you look to the likes of the 90s, um, companies like Sega hated the idea that an individual would be promoted more than the uh, the company itself. Mm -hmm. um, which is you can look up your gaming trivia facts, but they actually hid the credit sequence inside Sonic. Um, the developers did um, to get their names out there, but you have to do a specific code to unlock the the names actually behind it. Uh, which is why people know the name, you know, the, the chime Sega as opposed 
opposed to the people. Um, but that sort of changed last decade, and I like the idea of it, although we so, like I said, we associate companies these days, I like the idea of going back to the authorship and the creative and the individual and, you know, the people with the vision. I like the idea of putting them to the forefront. Mm -hmm. For as much as we like From Software, and, you know, a lot of people will then know Hidetaka Miyazaki, um, but it's kind of like, it's kind of, it's kind of both. But I yeah. like the idea of promoting the individual as well. So, I like, yeah. I mean, yeah, when it comes to games, they are such a, obviously, a huge collaborative process, mm. but I like that we could have those people that we look to, like, oh, every single time we see a Hideo Kojima game, yeah. that is something not only for a, from a cynical branding um, perspective to get excited about, mm -hmm. but from, like, a fan perspective, it's good, it's, it's exciting to look forward to their next game, whatever also, that may be. What if Kojima was just told, hey, you, your next game can be on Switch? What would he then do on Switch? He would think of something ridiculous using the IR sensor to make you eat like a whole ladder or something. Listen, this is the man who may be interested in getting a PSP so he can do <laughs> anything at all well, or whatever me, console he wants. Sadly not. Sadly, I didn't know you when Peace Walker came out. You didn't. You need to get a Vita, mate. You heard about the PS Vita? I'm not going to do that until <laughs> Kojima comes to the Vita. It's That'll a really be good the time. Point. Um, but yeah, let us know what you think down in the comments below. What if Death Stranding came to Xbox, or would you like to see it a dedicated PS4 exclusive? And what about the idea of it being on PC? For now, though, I've been Scott from WhatCulture.com. And I've been Josh from WhatCulture.com. And we'll catch you next time. Bye. Bye.